Dear feminists, in reply to Warhammer 40K, Magic the Gathering, and really comic books as well, I want to start out by saying I want to have a good faith discussion. I really do. Uh, I want to understand this push that I see going on across many hobbies for what you call representation. Um, in short, uh, how it plays out in both Magic, um, Warhammer, and in comics is that simple, it boils down to simply um, more women, POCs, and um, I don't know, uh, gay folks and whatever, trans folks in the game in general. Uh, I also want to establish my own bias here um, based on what I've seen from articles written by you in the Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, and comic books industry. Uh, it would seem that many of those pushing this initiatives uh, don't appear to be hardcore fans um, who happen to be feminists. Uh, they seem to me to be feminists who are also fans. Now, at the face value, you might be saying, well, how is that really different? It, it is. It's very different. Um, fans place the game above all else and then might have feminist opinions. But the articles I've seen written specifically about Magic and Warhammer and comics are all uh, what I would classify as written by a feminist who is using the hobby to inject their ideology. Now, if any of you um, folks who are writing these articles or making these videos are willing to have a good faith conversation with me and convince me otherwise, uh, you would be the first. Um, but again, I, I am willing to have this discussion with you. Um, sometimes it's it's it comes out to the way that you word your stink pieces. Um, it makes your presence really feel like some outside force, someone judging the community from the outside. Um, you make it clear your interest um, is specifically in, in the fandom is specifically where it starts and ends is feminism. Every day, federal scientists are looking for new ways to kill bugs. Your basic arachnid warrior isn't too smart, but you can blow off a limb. It's still 86% combat effective. Here's a tip. Aim for the nerve stem and put it down for good. Would you like to know more? It would seem to me when you look at Facebook groups like Feminist 40K that... Um, People who put feminism above most things are setting their, setting their sights on a game and not the other way around. It's concerning to me that everything I see written, now in real life you may be very different, but everything I see written um, appears to be from this ideological lens and I don't see very few um, fan articles, articles about the game without that aspect to it. Now, this isn't to gatekeep you, as um, you might call it. Um, it's to establish intellectual honesty. Many of you are clearly an advocate first uh, and foremost. And my perspective, or at least from my perspective, um, as someone who perhaps selfishly is simply only interested in the hobby. I work a lot of hours. I have a lot of normal life stresses. My view, my personal view of a hobby is as a stress reliever, not another thing to get stressed out about. Um, and when you look at some of these articles, as I prepare for my, I'm talking with Arch Warhammer um, later tonight, and I've been trying to prepare, and I've been reading some of these articles that were written about Warhammer, for example, and if the very first sentence in your article is, you trying to establish yourself as one of us, all you're really doing is letting us know that you are in fact not. When I read a headline that says, in the grim darkness of Warhammer 40K's far future, there are only men and it's terrible. Written by what I can only assume is a man, James. And the very first sentence of this article reads, 
Hi, my name is James, and I love Warhammer. Now, on my main channel, Unsleeved Media, I have over 1,000 videos on Magic the Gathering, and I'd be willing to bet there isn't a single one that I start out by saying, my name's Jeremy, and I love Magic the Gathering, unless it's perhaps advertising the channel. I've never felt the need to uh, establish myself, to pass my own purity test, as, as, as maybe a word is, as a true fan of the game. And it's my assertion that true fans of the game don't ever talk like this. They don't feel the need to say, hey, it's like um, that uh, bit where uh, the old guy comes up with his uh, skateboard, you know, actor, and he's like, how do you do, fellow kids? Hey, local teens, what's going on? Or, or whatever that, that meme is from Saturday Night Live. That's how it feels. And then when I read articles written by self-proclaimed feminists or looking at feminist ideologies or issues with inside of comics or Warhammer or Magic the Gathering, seeing headlines like, this is a literal headline, why are there so many actual fascists in Warhammer 40k fandom? Now, I know, based on the fact that this article was on the Mary Sue, which literally has more space dedicated to ads than actual content, I know what your intent is with a headline like this. And I'll probably title this video uh, something spicy as well. But if you want us normies, so to speak, the ones who spend our weekends playing these games, the ones that spend our weekends in the comic book shop, the ones that spend our weekends in the local game store, if you want us to take you seriously and listen to your issues, you can't write headlines like this. How would you, what would you expect? How would you expect the community to react? Seriously, if you're being intellectually honest... How would you react if I wrote an article that was headlined something like, how come so many male feminists are actual sexual abusers? Would you then read that article and take my message to heart? Of course not. So when you write articles like this, it leaves me to wonder, are you really being honest or are you just writing clickbait? Because when you title your article like this, I automatically assume everything after that title line is baloney. It's you just generating outrage and making that sweet, sweet click cash. Which brings me to my real question here for, for all feminists who are trying to examine each one of these particular hobbies. I can only really speak of these three because I know them the best. Whether it's Warhammer, Magic the Gathering, or comics, the narrative always seems to be the same. We want more representation. Let's look at what uh, Feminist40k posted this last week. Games Workshop is a big company, and it changes slowly when it changes at all. For all I know, they've already heard the complaints about the lack of female representation in Warhammer, and we just haven't seen the effects yet because the wheels are taking forever to move. I know they listened to their fans, and eventually they did with 7th edition Fantasy Debacle, again, an article for another day. The only thing to do is to keep up the pressure... And to make sure that people want, make sure they know that people want to see more female representation in Warhammer. Okay. Then let's take an excerpt, excerpt from the most recent Men and Magic community building article written by what I can only assume is some male, male feminist. Um, it certainly looks at the Magic the Gathering community through the feminist lens. And there are many articles about all these topics. But if I were to take these excerpts from every one of them, we'd be here all day. Here's an excerpt. Visibility is without a doubt the sector in which most progress has been made. Uh, Maria Bartholdi and Gabby Sparks are active hosts on Pro Tour. Notable players like Melissa Del Tora and Jackie Lee have been visibly working on the game itself. And media projects like Vintage Super League include personalities like Aaron Campbell and Ray Rachel Agnes. Emma Handy and Jaden Klomperin's Routinely sit at SCG tables, blah, blah, blah. Later on says, um, the visibility of women in magic media has improved substantially since attention was brought to the issue. There's still a lot of work to be done, however. The average number of women at each pro tour is one or less than one. Um, it's, hard to not it's hard to highlight a diverse cast in the future match, feature match area when there's no gender diversity to be found. I actually think this is the ultimate metric for success of all efforts meant to make magic more welcoming. So this person of the 20 plus million people that play magic 
legitimately says the absolute best way to garner whether or not females, women feel comfortable in magic is whether or not they top eight in a pro tour, an event that less than 1% of magic players even care about. So it's the very same uh, narrative in Marvel. We see the effect of that and, and what can be described as some as some of the lowest sales in comics in many years. I ask these questions in good faith. I asked them directly to the Feminist 40K group, and I didn't get much of an answer. I asked these questions because in order to establish or in order to be taken seriously, you have to be able to make a business case for it. Number one, is there any hard evidence that representation leads to growth of the game? I'm talking about comics, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, or a similar type fandom. Because all that I see is record lows in sales in Marvel. Number two, does it lead to more people to play with? Again, does more female representation bring more people to the game? Because if it does, and if you can prove it does, this is an argument you can make. Question number three, does it make the game more affordable? I don't know, does it? Is there some way that more representation brings more people to the game and drives on the cost of it? Because one, at least with com, um, with Magic and Warhammer, the cost of the game is a very real barrier. In my opinion, a far bigger barrier than representation. And question number four. How does it benefit the community at large? Does it make the game healthier? These are the types of questions any smart CEO would ask. Representation is entirely fine, but why? I find myself reading article after article and simply saying, oftentimes out loud to myself, but why? We're playing games that take place in a fantasy world. Why does having a character that looks like yourself mean so much to you? And, and can you prove that it actually helps the game in any way? I've searched the depths of Google for any hard evidence and I've found none. And so that's why I'm appealing to you feminists out there who seem to push this ideology. You must have some factual evidence other than it would be nice. Because if the, the sum total of your argument is that it would be nice to have non-binary characters in the game, in Warhammer and Magic and comics, there already are these things. There are already gay characters. There are already female characters. So now that you have them, the logical next answer, as I've always experienced, is, well, we want more. Well, my question to you is why? Why? Can you make a business case for it? Because most Magic players just want their drafts to fire. They want their FNM to have enough attendance to have three or four good rounds, and they want somebody to be able to deck test their latest deck with. Warhammer players just want somebody to play with. They want to utilize their customized armies. They want to test new armies. They want to be able to play the game. No player of this game or of Magic the Gathering has ever said to me, I want more um, gay people to play Magic with. Gay people that I know that play Magic have never once said, boy, I wish I had more gays to play with. I sat many of night in a local draft that only six people would show up and we couldn't fire it. Nobody once said, geez, could we have some more gays here? How come there's nobody that looks like me drafting? Everyone always says, dang, the draft didn't fire. I wanted to play Magic tonight. Everybody in the comic book world that I know just wants to take a load off and sneak into that little, um, that, that kind of, mythological cartoon world and enjoy maybe thinking of, 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 uh, stop thinking of the, uh, pains of the day for a little bit. How does representation achieve any of this is the thesis that a woman can't enjoy comics. If a woman isn't the co-star or the star of it, uh, because I would like to see some evidence of that. It seems to be, you know, the biggest problem with this, with this initiative uh, for representation is that it just doesn't, it's not rooted in facts. Um, it assumes, it seems to present to companies that there's some huge player base of people that are, are just waiting to invest hundreds of their hard earned dollars. If somebody would just look like them in Warhammer or magic or comics and sales data suggests this is simply not true. There are over 20 million magic players out there that buy the packs without giving to rip and toots about what the, the people in the packs look like. Okay, sure. Some businesses will make financially unintelligent decisions due to social pressure um, 
and, and force representation and diversity. But if you really want to make a change, if you really believe what you're saying, then wouldn't you think that adding this diversity would be a great thing? Wouldn't it be the easiest business case in the world to make? I mean, you're demanding change without taking the time to prove any tangible benefit. And as I see it, this just does not fly in the business world. Let's look at this representation argument from a business world standpoint, something that we can actually take to the higher ups and say, look, everybody wins with this. I've searched the web high and low and seen no direct correlation in increased sales in hobbies like magic, Warhammer or comics due to representation. This doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means I haven't found it yet. And hopefully, um, if some of you out there are interested in this thing, you will share some scientific or some case study evidence with me that proves your point. Um, because look, if increased representation leads to a healthier game state all around, I'm going to be one of your biggest and loudest supporters. I care only for the community in general. But if you can't, if you can't make any correlation between representation and game sales, then how would you expect any CEO at any company to take you seriously? And if that link isn't made, then I'll continue to do my part when these arguments get brought up. Everyone's doing their part. Are you? The war effort needs your effort at work, at home, in your community. <laughs>